it's Miss Cameron and hey it's Mrs. Rocha. <laughs> All right guys so today we are making homemade butter and you only need two ingredients or actually you only need one ingredient you need a clear jar or Tupperware whatever you want to use and then you need heavy whipping cream. I know it's a little bit crazy that you only need one thing but how we're gonna make it today is you have to pour about a cup of this into a clear jar and then you have to shake it. When you start shaking it, it'll start to solidify. So you're going from a liquid, the heavy whipping cream, to a solid. And if you have watched our States of Matter video that I put out mm, probably a month or two ago, you will learn that when you're going from one state of matter to another state of matter, I'll remind you we have three states of matter, solid, liquid, and gas. When you're going from one state of matter to the other, depending on if you're going from a liquid to a solid, you're decreasing the kinetic energy. And if you're going from a solid to a liquid, you're increasing the kinetic energy. And how that kind of works with this is we are going from a liquid to a solid. So what I'm gonna go ahead and pour my heavy whipping cream. It already looks like it has a thick texture. Think of like eggnog. So in order for this to work correctly, your heavy whipping cream needs to sit out until it is room temp, okay? So we are also making something else to go with this. We are gonna compare this butter. So this is considered unsalted butter. So we bought some store-bought, store brand, unsalted butter in a tub. It's a spread and we're going to compare it. Miss Rocha is making bread today, homemade bread, and I will let her explain that. Okay, so I wanted to actually make homemade bread um, with our homemade butter. So I have it cooking in my bread maker and you'll see a little time lapse of that. But basically you need warm water, um, sugar, and then you put the yeast on there and then you gotta let it foam because the hot water needs to activate the yeast, which makes our bread rise. And then we put um, salt and then oil. And then we put it in the bread machine and so hopefully it'll be done when our butter's done and then we can try it out. So I am going to make my own butter as well. And I will pass it over to Miss Cameron, who's already shaking her butter. Is it like or solidifying, Miss Cameron? Mmm, not really. I do feel like I'm gonna get some arm muscles from this, though. been shaking for about two minutes. I'm getting an arm workout in today. Miss Rocha is too. So let's talk about the science behind making homemade butter. So milk, this milk, this heavy whipping cream, it's not milk, it is heavy whipping cream, is 35% fat. It has the, a content of 35% fat. So what is happening is in here we have little fat globules. Globules are little membranes. They're kind of like little water balloons that are floating all around in there. So the bigger they are, the more they're, they're gonna float. And then the smaller they are, they're gonna sink to the bottom. So in that instance, if you think about density, the more dense a liquid is, it is going to sink to the bottom because all of those molecules in there are tightly packed together. So less, if you think of a, a substance that has less density, it is the molecules in there are going to be more spread apart so think about a liquid or a gas the molecules in there are going to kind of spread apart and move around at their own pace do their own thing and with a solid those molecules in there are closer together so those are going to sink to the bottom so the more dense a liquid is it is going to sink to the bottom and the less dense a liquid is it is going to float to the top so like I said, in this instance, we are going from a liquid to a solid. So those molecules in there are moving closer together and the kinetic energy is slowing down. That way those molecules only move around a little bit. All right, so we've been shaking for five minutes now and um, I just wanted to explain what the, the fat globules are doing as you shake. 
So as you're shaking it, those fat globules, think of them like water balloons, like Miss Cameron said, and when you shake them, they burst against each other, and so um, fat and water don't mix, and so the fat molecules that are released from the fat, fat globules, they want to they want to combine to the fat molecules. And so those fat molecules is the solid that we're going to be getting out of this. Mine's getting, I, I'm hearing less liquid and feeling it more solid. See? Yeah, I can't hear any liquid in mine right now. So we're supposed to shake for in between 5 and 20 minutes and we read where you should start seeing results in about 10 minutes, so I have a stopwatch here. We have been shaking for about seven and a half minutes, all right? So when we're done, we should have pretty much a solid clump of butter in there, but we're also going to have buttermilk in there. And if you've ever used buttermilk before, it is very thick, kind of smelly. You use it to fry foods or... I feel like you can put it, buttermilk pancakes, you can put it in there to make like a buttermilk flavor for your pancakes. Miss Cameron is all for some pancakes. That is Miss Rocha's butter. So you can see here, we have a clump of butter in the back, so that is our solid. And then we have all of this residual buttermilk that is left over, and that is normal for this process. I'm gonna open up the top. Oh wow. Miss, uh, Miss Rocha's looks like, kind of like cottage cheese. Can you see it? Yeah. You have a lot in yours. Let's just put them. So, yours is a smaller, bigger thing. It kind of smells like, just like milk to me. Here's the inside of mine. So Miss Roach's jar was smaller, so it had a very compact place for it to move around. So I wonder if that is why her glob of butter is probably going to be a little bit bigger than mine. Because if you look, you can kind you can see all of this buttermilk that's still left in there. Miss Roach's didn't have very much buttermilk, so I'm interested to see how big my um, globule of butter actually is. This is a pretty good glob. This Cameron's. Alright, so if you notice, the cream has turned into a yellow blob. And you're probably wondering, well, Miss Cameron, why did it turn yellow? Because the heavy whipping cream was white. So this actually has to deal with the milk that comes from the cow. So butter. The color of butter changes with the seasons depending on what cows eat, which I think is very interesting. So the more organic, the more fresh per se the grass is, the yellower your butter will be. So you can get butter sometimes and it looks kind of like a pale yellow, but then sometimes you can get butter that is bright yellow. Like think about like Lando Lakes or Country Crock or um, what is the one in the yellow box? Blue Bonnet? Yeah, the blue bonnet and the yellow box, the sticks of butter, those are sometimes a really pale yellow, kind of almost a white. So honestly, it just depends on how good that cow is eating. So your butter quality depends on the diet of a cow, basically. So this is the final product. What we did was we poured it out of our jars and we put it into this little bowl. We still have a little bit of time before the fresh bread is done but we are going to actually compare it, like I said at the beginning, to store-bought spread. So, which actually looks like this, all right? So this is basically this, but I bought it from the store, so we're gonna see if we can tell the difference. This one is a little bit more compact and there is no liquid moving around, no buttermilk moving around in this one compared to this one that we made. I also think that our homemade one is more yellow. Yes, so like I was saying, our homemade one has the more yellow appearance than this store-bought. And like I said, it all depends on the cow's diet. So, 
let's treat our cows nice and let them graze. photos that we just put before this that was from Miss Rocha's bread maker and let me tell you that's a pretty nifty machine I might have to get one myself okay so what I'm gonna do now is I have the butter that we made ourselves from the heavy whipping cream and then I also have the HEB unsalted whipped butter what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna spread it on a slice of bread and then I'm gonna let Miss Rocha do the same and then we're gonna try it and see if we can tell a difference between homemade and store-bought. Okay, so on this piece of bread, I have the unsalted whipped butter, and then on this one, I have the butter we made from just the heavy whipping cream. So I'm gonna go ahead and try this one. The butter was kind of crumbly. I really can't say this is store-bought. It doesn't really have a flavor. Alright, so on this piece I have the butter we made ourselves. So the first one, like I said, it's not salted. It doesn't taste like your regular butter, but there was still a little bit of um, a chunky consistency, so I'm going to compare it to the heavy whipping cream butter. It tastes about the same to me. This one is definitely a little bit more creamy, so the heavy whipping cream buttermilk butter that we made, it's definitely a little bit more creamy than the regular store-bought. So that's interesting. My turn to try our homemade bread and butter. Bread and butter pickles. I think this was the homemade one. Very creamy. Very good. Homemade bread, homemade butter. Yeah, I think we did great. So this has been our homemade butter video. If you decide to make homemade butter, let us know. Let us know how much you make. Tell us if you do anything different to it. We hope you are having a fun summer. We hope you are having a safe summer and you're staying safe among the pandemic that's going on. If you do anything with butter, let us know. We'd love to see what you do. If you have any suggestions on what we should do next, let us know. We love making these videos for you and we hope you find them um, entertaining and educational. Hopefully you learn something every time you watch. Maybe you just laugh at Miss Rocha and I. Who knows? But... We hope you find some kind of joy out of these videos, and we just want to thank you for your continuous support. So I hope you have a great day, guys. See you later.